Let's continue to solve equations using both principles, the addition and the multiplication principle. What I've done here is I've put two terms on each side of the equal sign so that I have to make some decisions here. Um, this problem, I'd like to isolate the variable. I have four possible things that I could do to both sides of this equation. I think I'm going to go ahead and share them with you. And it, the last one that I'm going to share with you is the one that I'm going to actually use. So, first of all, one of my options would be to add 1 to both sides of this equation. I don't want to do that right now, but I just want you to know it, uh, you can do that. You can be successful to do, doing that. Another one of my options, look at that 23 right there. There's a plus sign in front of it. So another one of my options would be to subtract 23. I kind of like to keep a little dotted line there from both sides of the equation, both sides of the equation. I don't want to do that either right now, but it is a viable option. Another one of my options right now is to work on the terms that have variables. If I would like, I could subtract 8x from both sides right now. The reason I subtracted 8x is because this had a positive 8x, and I wanted to get rid of the x term over here. I'm always trying to get rid of a term to, um, to get the variable term on one side and a constant on the other. That is still not the option I'd like to use, but it would be a viable option. I do like to focus on um, the x terms at first. The reason I don't choose to use this one, here x would disappear and I'd be left with a negative 1. When I combine those two like terms, remember I'm adding two negative numbers together. They would add to be a negative 12x. I just don't like negative numbers in front of my variable. So I work with the, the variable term that has the smaller coefficient. A negative 4 is smaller than a positive 8. And I choose to get rid of that term. Um, and so I add 4x to both sides of this equation. That's the option I'm going to take as my number one choice. That gets rid of the x term over here, and it just leaves the 23 on the right side. I collect those two like terms, 8x and 4x adds to be 12x. And now I'm in a position where I don't have choices. I have to add 1 to both sides. To get the variable term alone, I have to get rid of this. So I add 1 to both sides of the equation. And then finally, I use the multiplication principle last. In this case, I'm going to divide both sides by 12 and find out that x is equal to the number 2. In this one, I'm going to go ahead and check it. So my original problem is 8x minus 1 equals 23 minus 4x. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to put in the value 2. So here, 8 times 2 is going to be 16. And then I'll subtract 1 because I'm using order of operations. And then 23 minus 4 times 2, that'll be an 8. 23 minus 8. Again, order of operations says to multiply first. And over here, multiply the 4 times 2. So I have 23 minus 8. 16 minus 1 is 15. And 23 minus 8 is 15. And what I found out is the value of 2 for x works in this equation. The number 15 is meaningless. All that I found out is when I put the value that is the solution to the equation to both sides, that they balanced. It's that balance scale situation again. Let's do another problem. So as you're trying to get used to my methods, if you want to use them, I'm focusing on the variable terms first. I want to isolate them and get them on one side. So I'm going to either add 6a to both sides, or I'm going to add 2a to both sides. It doesn't matter, but I prefer to add 6a to both sides because that will cause these right here to add to be a positive 4a. And I love positive numbers. So on the right side, I'll have 4a plus 3 equals the 14. Those are gone. Now I have to isolate the variable term. I have to isolate the 4a. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. And I'll have 4a equals, uh, looks like, 11. And then I'll divide both sides by 4. And I'll have a equals 11 fourths. 
Let's go ahead and take the time to check this one too. So the original problem is 14 minus 6 times a equals a negative 2 times a plus 3. So anywhere I see a, I'm going to put in 11 fourths. So I have 14 minus 6 times 11 fourths. And here a negative 2 times 11 fourths plus 3. And let's multiply these together first, because order of operation says that I should. And when I multiply, I'll go ahead and reduce this first. So I have 33 over 2. So 14 minus 33 over 2. Here I'm going to reduce. 2 goes into here once and into here twice. That is a negative 1 times 11 is a negative 11 halves plus the whole number 3. You know, a couple of options. I think I'm just going to cause the whole numbers to have a common denominator of 2. So in the number 14, which is 14 over 1, I'm going to write it as 28 over 2. So 28 over 2 minus 33 over 2. Um, right here, the number 3, which has a 1 in the denominator, I'm going to multiply it top and bottom by 2. So I'm going to call it 6 halves, and I'm going to add to it the negative 11 halves. Let's see, 28 minus 33 is a negative 5 over 2. I'm running out of space here. And a negative 11 plus 6 is a negative 5 over 2. And they do indeed check. Let's see, let's try one more real quick. Similar, very similar. So these three problems that we've done in this clip are, are the exact same types. And I wanted you to see that you can get fractions, and you can check fractions. It is a challenge. There is no question to work with fractions. And I'm not going to stray from my method. I just stick with it all the time. So this negative 7 is smaller than the negative 3. So I choose, personally, to add 7x to both sides of the equation. And then I want to isolate the term that's got the variable in it, the 4x. I've got to get rid of this 4, which is positive. So the way to get rid of it is to subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. And then I do have 4x all alone, and 6 minus 4 is 2. I hope you notice that I've been using the addition principle, or here I subtracted, which is adding a negative number. I use the addition principle first. I never turn to dividing until the very end. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4 to get x alone. 2 divided by 4 can be reduced to be 1 half. And again, I should check this. I'm going to pause here, and we're going to um, involve some parentheses as we get ready to solve further equations.